let's do some math for fun and this time we are going to evaluate this limit huh it's a really big one right and does it really make sense when i plug in n is equal to infinity into all the n's right here when you do that you are plugging infinity into here you have the infinity in the denominator one over infinity zero but the second one is also zero and so on so on so on however in this case zero plus zero plus zero it's not zero because in fact we have a many and when n goes to infinity we have infinitely many zeros so zero plus zero yes i agree with you guys it's zero but then when you have a lot of zeros like infinitely many zeros when you add them up in terms of limits you may not end up with zero so do not draw any conclusion right here in fact to me this looks like an area question okay and let me do some review with you guys because when we first learn about areas and integrations this is the limit that we get okay so let me just give you guys a quick review right here so begin with a curve let me just draw it right here for you guys let me say this is my function f of x and suppose i just want to look for the area under f of x from zero let's say this is one okay i want to look for the area of this region how can we do that well you can do integration but that's the technical way before integration what you do is you cut this into many many rectangles how many n pieces right so i'm going to just cut this into n rectangles with equal width by the way so i'm just going to draw you guys uh, rectangles like this well, this is my first one and this is my second one i'm drawing the right end point but then technically it doesn't really matter because as long as we can find the area right here it doesn't matter if you use the left or the right or the mid points next to that but anyways i'm just going to draw you guys a few to illustrate okay so suppose from zero to one the whole thing is one i cut this into n pieces how big is each piece one over n right so this x value will be one over n and for the second x value is one over n and then another one over n so this right here will be two over n and then the third one is going to be three over n right and so on so on so on and of course you do a lot of this okay and at the end you end up with the last rectangle and this is the same as saying n over n which is the same as one right now let's look for the areas of each rectangle for the first one the area of the rectangle is the bottom times the height right the bottom width right here is one over n so let me put this down as one over n times for the height we plug in this x value into the function so we can get y value so that's the height so it will be f of one over n like this once again this represents the area of the first rectangle how about the second one and uh, usually we're just going to add it along the way so we can find the total of the areas right so for the second one the width is still one over n just that little piece one over n and we multiply by the height right here okay you see the x value is actually two over n and you start with the x value you go up and you get the y value here right so you plug in two over n into this x and we will have f of two over n and you see the deal right so you add the next one is going to be one over n times f of three over n and then so on so on so on the last one which is let's say this one is going to be one over n times f of n over n like this right all right so as you can see we're adding a lot of things together and usually what we can do is we can use the sigma notation right the summation symbol right here to write this down in a more compact form so i will do that for you guys this right here is the same as saying i can write down sigma right here and the only thing that's changing is this right here the one the two and the three the four and then the n right here that's the the, the, the term that's changing right so we have to use an index for that and the things that we haven't changed we're just writing down we always have the one over n we always have f and then something over n right for this that's been changing 
Well, we'll just use the index. Usually, we put on i. What does i mean? Well, i goes from 1 all the way to n. So that's what I put on right here. i goes from 1 to n. So this is the sigma notation for this expression. And when we have a lot of these rectangles, how many is it a lot? When n goes to infinity, then we will have the really tiny one and we will be able to get a precise area, right? And that's the idea of integration. So if you really want to get the area of all this, what we do is we take the limit as n goes to infinity, this is n. So at the end, right here, we also take the limit as n goes to infinity. And this right here will give you the area. And this is the same as saying integral of zero to, from zero to one f of x dx that's a pretty good view and now look at this because this is what we would like to do okay so first of all let me write this down right here the limit as n goes to infinity you see it match so we know it's kind of like a integral area question what i want to do first is i want to come with the i you see that the things that's changing is this one, two, and you know next it's going to be three, four, and so on. And at the end, it's going to be n. So that will be the i like this, okay? This is the i that we had earlier. So I will open the big parentheses, and then we have the summation. i goes from one to n, right? So I'll put down one to n again. On the top, we always have one, so we put down the one. And then over, we always have the square root of n in the front, so we put on the square root of n. And then we have another square root. And then we have a, another n inside. But then here we are going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on, so on, so on. That's the running index, which is the i. Okay? So this is how we can write this in a more compact form. And now what? We got this, and we got that. What do I need to do next? I should come up with 1 over n, right? This is what? This is 1 over square root of n. We are kind of close. We just have to do some algebra. As you can see, we have another square root of n right here, right? Even though I have a plus i right here. But look at this. This is plus i. And in fact, I want to look at something as i over n. So this is what I would like to do. Look at this, I would like to factor out an n right here. But I want to be proper with you guys. I will write down all the steps for you guys. So let me write this down. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. And let me just write this down again. The sigma of when i goes from 1 to infinity. Let me first write this down as 1 over square root of n times 1 over. Right here, I will factor out an n. So it looks like this, right? Factor out an n and then we multiply by, so do this carefully. Originally, you have n, I factored it out, so we have 1, okay? And then originally here, we have plus i, but I factored it out n. It will be plus i over n. And this right here is still in the square root, like this. And now, you see, this is still the limit as n goes to infinity, and then we have the summation i goes from 1 to infinity this is 1 over square root of n times 1 over another square root of n because this is the product now so i will write this down as 1 over square root of n okay and then times this is 1 over square root of 1 plus i over n like all this now what this times this is exactly what we want the 1 over n so let me write this down again. This is the limit as n goes to infinity square root sigma sigma when i goes from 1 to infinity. This times that is just 1 over n times this now, which is 1 over square root of 1 plus. Aha, I also get the i over n. That's what we want, huh? So I'll write this down in red, i over n, like this. And now, this match as well. What's the function? It must be this part. Where's the x? It must be this. 
the function is what? So by looking at this portion here, we know f of x, it has to be 1 over square root of 1 plus x, right? Because once again, when you plug in i over n in here for the x, you get exactly i over n right here. And as I said, this is exactly an integral question, right? The area, the integral. And this is going from exactly 0 to 1, as I pointed out earlier. How did I know it was from 0 to 1? The hint is, I see all the ones on the top, okay? And if I see the 2, maybe I know the width, it may be from 0 to 2 or something like that. But it works out nicely, huh? So, this is the integral from 0 to 1, just like what I said right here. And then the function is this, 1 over square root of 1 plus x, and we have the dx. Now what? Of course, integrate. I'll speed this up. I'll do this in blue. So here we go. Integral from 0 to 1, 1 over square root of 1 plus x, dx. What we have to do is use the u sum. So I will say this is u equals to inside which is 1 plus x. And you know dx is the same as dx, this is right. And you see this is going to be, this is x is going from 0, so x is equal to 1, right? So this right here, u will be going from what? When you plug in 0 into x, u is going from 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2, so. Okay, you go from 1 to 2. And right here we have 1 over square root of 1 plus x. And then inside is the u, so we have a u inside. dx is going to be u, so this is right. This is what we have, right? And to integrate this, I will look at this as 1 over u to the negative 1 half power. So this is the integral u from 1 to 2. And then this is 1 over u to the negative 1 half power. And we have to see u. To integrate this, we add 1 to the power. Negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. And then we divide it by negative. And we divide by 1 half, which is the same as multiplied by 2 over 1. So this is going to be 2 u to the 1 half power. And then we go from 1 to 2, right? And you see, I plus 2, I plus 1, and subtract. We have 2 in front, and then we have 2 to the 1 half. And then we minus 2, and then we plus 1 again. So we have 1 to the 1 half. Like this. At the end, you know, this is the same as 2. This is the same as square root of 2. Minus 1 to the 1 half power is just 1. So we have 2 times 4, which is just 2. This is going around. I am pretty sure if you are watching my video, you know how to do this integral already. But anyways, I did it for you already. This integral is equal to that, which is 2 square root of 2 minus 2. And this will be the answer for that limit. You like it? Cool. Black pen, red pen, yeah!